Are you a fan of classic TV series that left a lasting mark on pop culture? If you're nodding in agreement, then The Amazing Spider-Man, the 1977 television series, might have a special place in your heart. This beloved show brought the iconic web slinger to the small screen, capturing the imaginations of viewers nationwide. The series also featured a classic Hollywood actor in a pivotal role. So, do you have a cherished memory associated with this TV series, or perhaps a favorite classic Hollywood actor from the cast? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Now, let's delve into some intriguing facts about this classic show. The Amazing Spider-Man, a 1977 TV series, swung onto screens as a live-action adaptation of the beloved Marvel Comics character, Spider-Man. This iconic show followed the adventures of Peter Parker, a young photographer, and his crime-fighting alter ego, Spider-Man, in the bustling streets of New York City. Staying faithful to its comic book origins, the series introduced viewers to Peter's dual life, his love interest, the intrepid reporter Gwen Stacy, and his encounters with classic villains like the Green Goblin and the Kingpin. Despite its limited budget and special effects technology of the time, the Amazing Spider-Man managed to capture the essence of the web-slinging superhero. It combined action, suspense, and moral lessons, portraying the struggles of a young hero balancing personal responsibilities and the fight against crime. With actor Nicholas Hammond in the titular role, the show left an indelible mark on popular culture, introducing Spider-Man to a wider audience and setting the stage for the character's future success in film and television. The series may not have had the modern CGI spectacle, but it laid the foundation for Spider-Man's enduring appeal, making it a treasured relic in the superhero genre. CBS wanted to land Nicholas Hammond to play Peter Parker after seeing him perform in an English play at the Mark Taper Forum in Los Angeles. Hammond accepted the role and told them he wanted to do a realistic portrayal of the character. He did not want it to be set up as a comedy like the 60 Seconds Batman TV show. In 1977, the TV series The Amazing Spider-Man brought the iconic comic book character to the small screen. CBS cast Nicholas Hammond in the role of Peter Parker, also known as Spider-Man. What's interesting is that CBS discovered Hammond after his performance in an English play at the Mark Taper Forum in Los Angeles. Hammond had a specific vision for the character he wanted to portray Spider-Man realistically and avoid the comedic tone of the 1960s Batman TV show. This approach set the tone for the series and gave it a more serious and dramatic feel compared to other superhero shows of the time. Hammond's commitment to a realistic portrayal and CBS's decision to cast him shaped the show's direction. It diverged from the campy style of earlier superhero series and aimed for a more grounded and relatable depiction of Peter Parker's life as a crime-fighting superhero. The show ran for two seasons, and even though it had its limitations, it made its mark as an early attempt to bring Spider-Man to live-action television. Unlike the comic book origin story where Peter Parker is a high school student when he's bitten by a radioactive spider and later learns responsibility due to the death of his Uncle Ben, the TV series portrayed Peter as a grad student when he gains his powers. This change in the character's background added a unique twist to the Spider-Man story. The TV series of The Amazing Spider-Man remains a significant part of the character's media history and Nicholas Hammond's commitment to a realistic portrayal left a lasting impact on how Spider-Man was presented on screen. The TV series The Amazing Spider-Man from 1977 made a significant change in Spidey's love life. Unlike the comics, where Peter Parker had relationships with Mary Jane Watson, Betty Brant, and Gwen Stacy, the show had him romantically involved with a reporter named Julie Masters. This shift in Peter Parker's romantic life was a notable departure from the comic book canon, but it was one of the distinctive features of the television adaptation. Interestingly, Nicholas Hammond, who played Peter Parker, Spider-Man in the series, was supposed to have a cameo as a cab driver in Spider-Man, No Way Home. However, due to location filming overruns, the scene was cut from the script a few days before it was due to be shot. This tidbit of trivia highlights the connection between the 1977 TV series and the broader Spider-Man cinematic universe. Furthermore, there were plans to reunite Nicholas Hammond as Spider-Man with the Incredible Hulk in a TV movie. This telefilm was set to be distributed by Universal Pictures and Columbia Pictures for a spring 1984 air date. 
It was an ambitious project, with Hammond also serving as a co-writer alongside Ron Sadloff and Stan Lee. Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno were expected to reprise their roles of Dr. David Bruce Banner and the Incredible Hulk, respectively. Despite the involvement of crew members from both TV series and the creation of the iconic black costume from the comics for Hammond's Spider-Man, Universal canceled the project before filming began due to budgetary reasons. In conclusion, the Amazing Spider-Man TV series of 1977 brought some notable changes to the Spider-Man storyline, most notably in Peter Parker's Love Life. Additionally, it had a potential connection to a cameo in a more recent Spider-Man movie and an ambitious crossover project with the Incredible Hulk that unfortunately never came to fruition. In the 1977 TV series The Amazing Spider-Man, there was a notable departure from the comics. Unlike in the comics where J. Jonah Jameson despised Spider-Man, in the show, his abrasive personality was toned down. Jameson was portrayed as more friendly and even like the wall crawler. This contrasted with the comics where Jameson carried out a smear campaign against Spider-Man, turning many against the hero. This change in Jameson's character added a unique dimension to the TV series and allowed for a different dynamic between the character and the web slinger. It was a notable departure from the source material and contributed to the distinctiveness of the show. The TV series The Amazing Spider-Man from 1977 holds a unique place in the history of Spider-Man adaptations. One interesting fact is that it wasn't the first time Spider-Man appeared in live action on television. Prior to the series, Spider-Man was featured on the PBS children's show The Electric Company, where he was portrayed by dancer and puppeteer Danny Segrin. However, The Amazing Spider-Man marked the first time a live action Spider-Man spoke and was seen as Peter Parker. It was a significant step forward in bringing the character to life on the screen. What's even more intriguing is that during the production of The Amazing Spider-Man, the character was simultaneously being featured on The Electric Company. This is a rare occurrence in television history, where two different TV shows were producing episodes around the same comic book superhero at the same time. The series had an unconventional start, premiering as a feature film on CBS in the United States. Notably, it was the first Spider-Man production to have a theatrical release, albeit exclusively in Europe. The Amazing Spider-Man of 1977 set the stage for future live-action adaptations of the iconic character and holds a special place in Spider-Man's on-screen journey. As we bid farewell to the web-slinging adventures of the 1977 TV series, The Amazing Spider-Man, we invite you to take a moment to reflect on the unique connection you forged with this iconic show. Whether you grew up watching the series or discovered it later, the impact of Peter Parker's dual life as the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man has left an indelible mark on countless fans. Perhaps you remember the thrill of seeing Spider-Man's acrobatics for the first time swinging from skyscrapers with unwavering courage. Maybe the chemistry between Peter Parker and his beloved Aunt May touched your heart, or the episodic battles against classic villains like the Green Goblin and Dr. Octopus kept you at the edge of your seat. The show was a gateway into a world where ordinary people could become extraordinary heroes, teaching us about responsibility and the power of using our talents for the greater good. Now, we encourage you to share your fondest memories and thoughts about this cherished series. Did it inspire your own sense of heroism, or did you bond with friends and family over the web slingers' escapades? Your experiences are an essential part of the tapestry that makes The Amazing Spider-Man so enduring. Thank you for taking this moment to reflect on the impact of this series and for sharing your thoughts with us. Your engagement helps keep the spirit of Spider-Man alive and we appreciate your time and interest in this classic show. Stay tuned for more exciting journeys through time and imagination. Until next time, Excelsior.